because I think the big thing in the game at the moment, you know, there's a there's equalisation across the board in terms of physical training. You know, things that we did with Japan that were maybe a little bit revolutionary training wise now is commonplace. You know, every team's doing it. Um, so all those physical advantages are getting are getting harder and harder to to get an edge. I think um, the big edge is tactically being able to adapt to games like and 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 the it's not a, it's not only tactical it's a psychological adaption to games like how many times do you, now you see in, in a lot of sports these massive momentum swings where one team comes out leads three goals and then they look like they're unbeatable then all of a sudden something happens and the whole game swings and then the other team gets momentum but the other team had been so fantastic for 30 minutes now can't find themselves and and they can't find themselves because of this because they're unable on the field to say right this is what we've got to do and this is where we've got to go so it all comes down to the leadership of the team the the adaptability of the team so that's to me that's the big change yeah and does that big win down, for us yeah yeah and does that come down to what you've talked about before which is the players having to manage things coach things on the pitch yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, but the coach's responsibility is to create environments where you can grow, grow, those, grow those skills and grow those qualities. And I think that's where training becomes a lot messier than it used to be. Um, you know, and I've seen football sessions where they look like they're perfect, they're like clockwork. But the game's not like that, is it? The game is messy, so you've got to create sessions that are, that are messy and then your ability then to feed back to the players and the players' ability to reflect on what's being done, I think is crucial going forward. And that's where I see the big advancements of the game. Right, oh, okay. Um, would you create scenarios in a training session then? So you might pull a couple of players off without telling the players and see how they respond to those then? Constantly do that, constantly do that. And, and the players don't enjoy it. Um, and it makes them uncomfortable because they like doing, you know, set 15 versus 15 or 11 versus 11 in football. Um, so we're constantly taking players off, making the players adapt quickly, um, create situations on the field, solve problems. Yeah. So, so you've got to kind of try and create that chaos in an artificial way, really. 100%. And, but you've also got to have a method to doing that. You've also got to always know where you want to end up. What do you want to end up from this from this situation? You know, I see, and, and it's been in rugby lately, there's a lot more emphasis on having a games philosophy to teach the games. Yeah. But you can't just let kids kids or players play games. You've got to know what what you're trying to achieve in that game. What's the end result? And it's like any any drill you have, what's the end point of the drill? Where do you want to get to? And and always be creating that. And then and therefore, I reckon the skill of coaching is getting more and more, and more complex. Yeah. Um, before, you know, you'd have more structured type sessions. But those sort of sessions are becoming um, less and less relevant to the game. 